You're watching World News Today with me, Zainab Badawi. Now, people in Azerbaijan have been voting in the country's presidential election, which many say was a foregone conclusion even before polling day. Exit polls suggest the incumbent Ilham Aliyev has won more than 83% of votes. He controversially changed the constitution to allow him to run for a third term. The president's third term victory would further cement the rule of the Aliyev dynasty in Az Azerbaijan. His father, Haydar Aliyev, ran the country for 10 years before his death in 2003. The main opposition candidate, Jamil Hassanli, who represents a coalition of opposition parties, is apparently trailing on about 8% of the vote. He claims his campaign had witnessed cases of ballot stuffing at a number of polling stations. While well, Azerbaijan is an oil-rich country that is strategically important, it is surrounded by key countries like Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. It is a staunch ally of Western nations. Azerbaijan has contributed to U.S. missions in Afghanistan, Iraq and Kosovo and has strong economic links, especially in energy, with Europe. Well, critics claim the West overlooks the authoritarian rule of the Aliyevs because of its strategic and economic significance. And here to discuss this and the election are Polad Mamadov. He's a spokesman for the Embassy of Azerbaijan here in London. And we're also joined by Murad Ghassandi. He's a senior member of Jamil Hassanli's opposition campaign team. Polad Mamadov, first of all, the elections. Is it 83% and 8% to the opposition? Well, it, the preliminary results by the Central Election Commission as well as the exit polls results show, uh, yes, the, that will be in the region of 81-84% 80, for incumbent, President Ilham Aliyev, and the rest for, for the rest nine, nine candidates. And uh, I'm not sure about the exact uh, percentage of the main ca candidate of the opposition, but should be around, I think, 8. What we said about 8 percent. So, Murad Ghassanli, the opposition like you claim that uh, that's the result and that it was a foregone conclusion because there's been rigging. What evidence do you have? Uh, the, the election was obviously rigged. I mean, only last night a scandal broke out when an independent um, online TV channel made onto very released um, information that an official um, mobile phone app um, launched by the Central Electoral Commission um, released the results of the election last night before the vote actually took place. So this is just an indication of the kind of rigging that was actually pre-planned. But that doesn't indicate rigging. I mean, what evidence was there that well, what, there the was ballot stuffing? Today, the, 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 um, today we've had numerous reports and video material coming out on, on social networking sites of ballot stuffing, rigging, carousels where um, groups of people with going from polling station to polling station, stuffing ballots, and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, uh, the okay. result is... Paul Ard Mamadov, what do you say to accusations? Well, um, as in previous elections, if there are the cases, and if there are strong evidence showing that there's been uh, irregularities in the elections, I'm sure they, they will be investigated by the Central Election Commission. And in the previous elections, w even some officials in charge of the electoral process, they were arrested. For, for those irregularities. And if there is a strong evidence, uh, you know, they could then be referred to the It's not going to change election the election commission. results, is it, though? Um, it's I mean, because you're, because not say, you're not saying that Aliyev would not have won the election, no, are you? No, we are saying that. In he would not have actually won the election. Ilham Aliyev had never won a free and fair election. And if there was a free and fair election, he would not win. And that is why we've had a crackdown on human rights campaigners, on civil society, on opposition activists, on independent media. And that's been going on for the last you know, 10 years, but in particular in the last six months we have seen this uh, crackdown and it, it's obvious that it's, well, it's been I mean, It's not just the opposition who talk about this growing authoritarianism in the, Azerbaijan, the, 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 even the Americans, your allies, are saying that. The, the, problem, the problem with opposition in Azerbaijan is that they don't accept that President Aliyev enjoys strong popularity among, among, the, among, strong among popularity the population. Why the election? Let me, let me tell you, even, the, even the independent Western polling firms which uh, approved, approved that you know he he himself enjoys strong popularity. He's the most uh, popular politician in the country. So uh, to put the whole blame on so-called irregularities it's or irregularities. It's unfair systematic, environment, it's systematic stealings I'm, I'm of elections the and the opposition in the country. Beyond the 
Beyond the election, uh, we are hearing Human Rights Watch, but also governments, as I said, even the US State Department, there was a, a report that there is growing authoritarianism in Azerbaijan. You've had the Aliyevs in power for 20 years, first the father, then the son. Well, what, what I will say is that, you know, we have, we have the elections and, and these people, the incumbent president Ilham Aliyev and his father Hidra Aliyev have come to power through elections. Right. So there's there's no right. case right. of Mr. Aliyev but not even right. we, right. we also right. admit that there is a uh, Mr. Aliyev should not have been standing for a third term. It's sure. unconstitutional. Well, it's it's actually we're challenging that in courts because we believe that this is a violation of constitution, and uh, a legal challenge has been launched on second of October. This legal challenge will continue, yeah. and this has serious repercussions about Mr. Aliyev's legitimacy in the long run. But, you know, when you look at Azerbaijan, strategically so important, the only country that borders both Russia and Iran, pivotal state, helps the U.S. with, you know, tr tr um, supplies coming in and out of Af Af to Afghanistan and so on. You're not going to really see very, very severe criticism, are you? Absolutely. Well, I mean, this is, a, this is a decision for policymakers in London and Washington, but it's a very short-sighted decision to sacrifice principles and democratic but values. But it brings stability to a very dangerous neighborhood. It brought up stability. We've had violent, uh, violent uprisings this year all across the country, different regions of the country. There were protests in Ismaili, in Guba, and these protests turned violent, and these weren't organized by the opposition which is why the opposition had come together in a united coalition precisely because we want to avoid the scenarios that had taken okay. place well, elsewhere. Mamadov, are you going to start listening to some of these criticisms not only coming from the opposition but also international human rights organizations governments? What, what, what the government says is that yes there are shortcomings in certain areas and we understand we acknowledge that there is a need to do uh, certain things better in, in areas like human rights, You've been saying that civil society, years. strengthening democracy and we understand these need and we are taking concrete steps. The there government is taking concrete steps to, in to strengthen civil societies, to strengthen democracy and to By imprisoning journalists. strengthen human rights in the country. And the, the just, just to give you an example, we adopted oh. a yeah, we human rights action plan. Okay, in we haven't got time for that, but clearly, um, you, Murad Ghassani, um, are talking about the uh, violations of human rights and, and so lack of freedom of expression and so on in there the country. Are 142 political prisoners in Azerbaijan right. today, according to the latest reports. If you look at the Amnesty International sure. Human Rights Watch reports, it, it's clearly that this regime okay. is becoming more authoritarian, more corrupt. Murad Ghassani from the opposition in Azerbaijan and Palad Mamadov, spokesperson for the Azerbaijani embassy here in London. Gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed for coming.